promised the tank engine was feeling bright and cheerful. It was a splendid day. Good morning, he whistled to some cows, but the cows didn't reply. Never mind, said Thomas, they're busy with their breakfast. Next, he saw Birdie. Hello, Birdie, count for a race today? But all Birdie could say was, Ouch! That's another hole in the road. I'm sorry, Birdie, smiled Thomas. Thomas was still in good spirits when Birdie arrived at the next station. Bad luck, Birdie. Now, if you're a steam engine, you will run a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Birdie. The railway is supposed to have returned to Mendon Road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Birdie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. And Thomas puffed away towards the big station. James was snoring about in the yard. It's too bad, he grumbled. Percy goes to work at the harbor and I do his job, here, there, and everywhere. Take that! Oh! groaned the faint cars. Just you wait, we'll show you! Gordon laughed. I'll tell you what, James, if you pretended to ill, you couldn't shunt fake cars here or go to the corridor, could you? What a good idea, answered James. Look, here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up, he puffed. It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter? asked Thomas. He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I mean, I am, answered James. I don't feel well at all. Don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help you out if you're ill. <coughs> Gordon and James snickered quietly to each other. Some of James's cars were coupled behind Thomas, and he steamed away to the quarry. The cars were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us all play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is good as another. But Thomas didn't hear them. He collected all the stones from the quarry and fell off back to the junction. Danger lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the cars. Go faster, go faster. They pushed Thomas over the switches. Slow down, called Thomas' driver and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in the muddy pond as the tow eyed him suspiciously. Bust my buffers, muttered Thomas. The day started so well, too. Doug pulled away the cars, and Edward helped Thomas back to the junction. Suddenly, Thomas remembered the missing tie. He told Edward all about it. That's strange, said Edward. A car full of Thomas went up from my station. That must be it. Drive will make sure it gets to Birdie now. Later, James spoke to Thomas. I'm sorry about your accident, he muttered, and so is Gordon. We didn't mean to get you into trouble. No indeed, brother Gordon. A real misunderstanding, Thomas. All's well that ends well. Just then, Bertie arrived. He looked much more cheerful. My role's being mended now. Oh, I am glad, replied Thomas. Thanks for all you did, added Bertie. Now I know I can trust an engine, and especially if his name is Thomas. Gordon and James put sign away to the shed, but Thomas still had company. Well, well, he sighed. What a day for surprises. The toad, who was looking forward to a ride home, noisily agreed.